Hi, I'm Mike Stanton. This is a BAM Credit Insights video about the Pajaro Valley Water Management Agency in Northern California, which is selling approximately $36 million of new money bonds. And the bonds will be underwritten by Hilltop Securities and can be rated AA with a stable outlook due to Build America Mutual's guarantee and carry an underlying rating of single A from S&P Global Ratings. Mark Capel, a Managing Vice President in BAM's West Coast Public Finance Group, is here with us to talk about the transaction. So Mark, can we start with the basics? What is the agency's role and what will they be doing with the funds they raise in this uh, transaction? So the, the primary operations of the agency consist of ensuring the long-term health and viability of the Pajaro Basin. And specifically, that means ensuring that the region's source of water, which is almost entirely groundwater from the aquifer that is the Pajaro Basin, remains healthy so that there's no overdrafting of supplies and so that no intrusion of seawater from the Pacific Ocean uh, doesn't come in and contaminate the groundwater supply. Uh, the agency also does provide directly some raw water supplies to certain customers in areas that are particularly vulnerable to seawater intrusion. Um, and the service area generally encompasses about 70,000 acres in primarily the northern portion of Monterey County. That includes the area basically the, that, that's defined as the general, uh, the greater coastal Pajaro Valley watershed. And that includes about 60,000 residents, uh, a ton of agriculture, all kinds of uh, uh, various types of agriculture, um, and also includes the city of Watsonville, which is about 50,000 residents. Um, I should note that the vast majority of the agency customers are, in terms of water purchased, are agricultural interests, and there are about 770 of those large ag users in 2023. And bond proceeds will will go to uh, continuing to maintain and improve um, the what the agency's role again is to maintain that uh, that water basin uh, for use uh, later. And so that's an important point. The agency primarily deals with non-potable water, agricultural use water. Um, but California is a very robust system to uh, to ensure the the long-term stability of its groundwater supplies, and uh, the, the agency is a key part of that. And that's why these bonds, uh, as new money bonds supporting that, are classified as BAM Green Star Green Bonds. They align with the ICMA Green Bond principles uh, for those reasons. So let's talk about the economics and the credit quality and how you underwrote that. Uh, how does the agency charge its customers and to generate the revenue that will repay these? And these are we should clarify, these are certificates of participation, not technically bonds, but they, they work in a similar way. Yes, yeah, so the agency is authorized under California Water Code uh, to levy something called groundwater augmentation charges uh, on the production of water from all groundwater extraction facilities within the agency's service area. Specifically, that means that the agency annually sets a rate schedule for all its water customers, bills the majority of the customers based on how much water they actually pull out of the, uh, the ground from their wells. And the agency has metered pumps on all the wells that extract more than 10 acre feet of water per year. Uh, those groundwater augmentation charges represent about 85% of the agency's operating revenues and direct water sales that I mentioned before account for a more modest 15% of the overall agency's water revenues. So what did you look at when you were trying to assess the long-term viability of those revenues to make sure that they'll still be there in the future to repay the cops? Yeah, ultimately, we get comfortable in this credit based on the essential nature of the service, which is protection and maintenance of an underlying water basin. Um, I would note that in 2014, the state adopted uh, SIGMA, which is the Sustainable Groundwater Management Act, it's a series of regulations that ultimately require all 200 plus water basins in the state uh, to maintain a dedicated management and long-term basin management plan. Um, the agency is, is, as far as we can tell, well positioned and far ahead of the curve in this regard. Uh, we also analyze their ability and willingness to raise their rates. They have a long, uh, long term uh, schedule of rates already approved, rate increases approved, uh, and they have a long history of raising rates uh, nearly annually for the last couple of decades. Uh, we analyze their financial position, which is very strong, very healthy liquidity. Uh, fiscal year 22 ended with 882 days of cash on hand and has averaged over 700 days of cash over the last six plus years. Uh, and per the agency, as of March 2023, the cash balance totaled $18.5 million, which is over $1,000, 1,000 days cash on hand based on fiscal year 22 operations. Uh, obviously, the historical debt service coverage uh, is a measure of their financial health. And that's averaged between 2.17 and 2.44 times over the past five years. So quite robust uh, projected coverage for fiscal year 23 is about two times. I would note that coverage is projected to fall to a low of about 1.36 times by 2027 when maximum annual debt service occurs. 
uh, but obviously there's a system of adopted rate increases that have already been uh, at least adopted uh, that will offset those um, the rising debt service costs. And by 2020, uh, 2032, debt service coverage rises again to about 1.81 times. And they're not done with their capital improvement plan. There will be more bonds coming, but that's understood and anticipated in your analysis. That's exactly right. So one last thing, you know, you, you did mention that the uh, in your report that the um, uh, constant the, the uh, rate payer concentration is a little, is a little bit uh, of uh, worthy of note. Uh, but you also notice that the uh, the agricultural outputs of the age of the region are uh, diverse and and high value, right? That's exactly right. There's not only a diversity in the nature of the agricultural crops that uh, uh, are are produced here. Uh, but there's also a large organic uh, component too, and uh, that adds to the sort of high value of the crops relative to um, certain other areas of the state that have less organic uh, produce um, produced. That's great. Well, thanks for sharing your insights today, Mark. Uh, for our viewers, a BAM credit profile on this transaction is available on our website. As we said, the transaction will be priced the week of May 15th. And thanks for taking the time today. Thanks, Mike.